Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to cover how to use our 3D box rendering tool, explain exactly how it works and why you would want it. My name is Martin and you are watching Amazon Adventures. Alright, so where did this tool come from and what's the point of it? Everybody who sells on Amazon knows that first image is essential. That's what your customer sees as they're scrolling through listings and if your image isn't fantastic, you have very little chance of actually grabbing the sale. Now, normally what happens is you have, say, a box designed, and maybe a designer does it, maybe you do it, it gets sent to your manufacturer in China, they print the box, they put the product in it, and off it goes to Amazon. And then you need to get a hold of that box somehow so that you can do a picture of it, or a photographer can do a picture of it, and there's a ton of time lost. So what we wanted was to have it up and running and ready the second our product arrives in the distribution warehouse and is ready to purchase, we're ready to go. So what we've done is developed a tool that takes that flat image that your designer may have made and does a perfect 3D rendering of it with your product. Okay, so that cuts out all of that extra time. Now the beauty of this is that our system um, allows you to do it without a camera, allows you to do it without even a photographer, has almost every standard box size available for you in our deluxe version, quite a few of them in our free version as well, along with full instructions. You can now have that perfect image, and if you are doing, say, a bundle or a whole family of products, say for Facebook advertising, every single 3D rendered box is done at exactly the same angle and height. So you could design three or four products individually and then put them all together, and it looks like they're designed to be done that way. So you can do this with Photoshop or Photoshop CC, as mentioned, or GIMP. Now, GIMP is a free image editor, very, very powerful and very easy to use. So we're going to go over how to use it in these two programs and hopefully it'll be of great use to you guys. All right, so let's go over how to use our 3D box rendering tool in the free image editing software, GIMP. Now, GIMP is both very powerful and it does look a little bit complex. Do not be overwhelmed by all the tools you see here on the left-hand side. Most of the stuff here we're actually not gonna need. Before we begin, I wanna make sure that the right-hand side is a little bit wider here so we can see the layers and the notes that we'll have with them. So I'm just gonna grab the mouse there and slide that over. All right, so to begin, we need to open two files. One is a 3D box template, and the other one would be the flat image that perhaps our graphic designer or us will have designed. So let's open those two files first, and they are in the sample um, and full version zip for you to practice with as well. So 3D box template, we'll open that. And once we do so, it's gonna ask us whether we want to keep or convert. We're gonna choose keep in both instances. So let's open that. And then the second file. Now you'll be able to see both the files at the top of the screen here, just tiny little thumbnails, but that will allow us to hop back and forth between the two. So we're gonna start with our 3D box template here. I'm just gonna point out a couple things. Uh, on the right hand side, these are all the different layers. Now most of the stuff you don't have to worry about. We've just built it so that it does the lighting and the shadowing and everything else the way it's supposed to. Uh, what we are concerned with are the ones with the, the hashtags. So box two, uh, side and front over here, that is the second box back here. That'd be for the back of your box if you wanna use that. And then box one front and box one side are here. Um, as we move around in the window, there's usually a slider bar here that we can go left and right with, so that's useful. We will be zooming in and out, so our first tool is the zoom tool. So just by clicking on it and then clicking somewhere into the screen, it will zoom in roughly at that spot with that as the center. And now again, I can, I can pan back and forth. If I hold down the control key and click it, it will zoom out. So we'll keep it at about here. All right, the same thing will work with our actual flat box design. I can click and zoom in. So let's begin. Let's put first the front of the box on the front. So the first tool we're going to need um, is the select tool. Now, in order to make sure it goes where it's supposed to, I'm just going to here hop back to our 3D tool. We're going to do the front first. So let's make sure we click on box one front. You should see it sort of blacked out or grayed out here. Once that's selected, then we go over to our 2D image. Make sure we have the rectangle select tool chosen and then click and hold from the top right corner and drag down to the bottom left corner until the entire area is selected. Once you have it, simply release the mouse button. You'll see a dashed line around it and then choose edit and copy. We hop back to our 3D template. We make sure that this is indeed selected and we just choose edit and paste. 
All right, now it's in here, but clearly it doesn't look anything like it's supposed to. So we gotta do a couple of things. First, we need to move it where we want it, and then we need to basically make it look 3D. So we go to here, the Move tool, which is represented by the four arrows, the four directions. Click on that, then click and hold on your image that you've just pasted in, and you can see that you can move it around the screen freely. We're gonna line up the top left corner. Now I can do that with the mouse. I can also release the mouse and do it with the arrow keys on the keyboard and just nudge it a pixel or two at a time. It's nice to do that for fine tuning. And I wanna make sure I don't see any blue showing through the bottom there. So once that is lined up, we've got one corner in place. There's just three more to line up. So for that, we need one other tool here, which is this one called the perspective tool. So clicking on that, I can then grab any corner and simply click the mouse, hold it, and drag it to where I want it to go. So I'll start here with the bottom left corner. I click and drag it down. I will grab the top right corner, click and drag it to here. And the main thing is to make sure that no blue is showing. Then you know you've got it lined up. If you're a pixel or two over, that doesn't matter. But if you're a pixel or two under, it does. When you've got it in place, click again on the rectangular select tool, and then click somewhere in the white space to sort of deselect. So now I can see that this is in line. Now, if you make a bit of a mistake, so you can see here there's a little bit of blue line showing, there's a couple things I can do. I can go to the move tool and simply just nudge it down a little bit, but then of course I'm gonna see it at the top. I can do control Z to back out a step or two until I see my selection tool like that again, and I can simply redo it. So let's do that just as an example here. We can grab my perspective tool and let's just drag it down again. So again, Control Z will back up one, two, three, in fact, almost infinite number of steps. So it's often easier if you make a mistake to just back up again to when it was perfectly square and then reline it up. You can use a perspective tool again, but the contact points will be moved, so it'll be a bit tricky to get that to line up the way you want it. All right, pretty happy with that. All right, box one side. So again, select that first, just click on it once, do that first, then move over to your 2D render of your box cover, and let's again grab from top left corner to bottom left corner. Okay, making sure I grab just the side. Once again, edit and copy back to my 3D image. Edit, paste. I grab the move tool, bring it to the top left corner, then grab my perspective tool and adjust those corners. So again, this is something we've just done. We've, we've learned all really that we need to learn almost. We're just gonna do it these three more times to make sure we get the other sections in place. And that is it. And again, I can fine tune and adjust if you go, okay, no, that's not a bit off. Line a line. I can see there's a little bit of yellow showing here at the bottom, fine adjustment. Again, when finished, rectangle select, click somewhere in the white, and that looks perfect. Now there's a little gray line here that's just to kind of allow for how the light would hit the bend, the fold in it. All right, let's slide this down a little bit. And that's box one done, let's do box two. So again, sliding down to here, we want box two front first. So again, click on that first. When it's grayed out, then go to your 2D image. Let's slide this down. Rectangular select tools already selected. Let's grab from top right corner to bottom left. Again, edit, copy, hop back, edit, paste, grab the move tool. Once you've done this a few times, you'll get very, very good at it and go quite quickly. Got that in place, perspective tool, grab the corner. Now this corner, the bottom right corner, I can't actually see because it's hidden by the box here. Yeah, there's an easy way to do that. Let's grab the top right corner first. Slide that into place. And then I just need to make sure that this line is straight. As long as it's lined up straight, I know I've got it basically exactly where it needs to be. You have a little bit of uh, give on it. You don't have to be 100%, but it'll be pretty close. Happy with that. Deselect looks great. One more layer to go. So box two side, again, click on that first. Jump back to your 2D image. Now with this box, the two side panels are identical. Now they could have a situation where say like this blue line was not quite as vertical as this, it was more horizontal and say it was moving off the front into the side and into the back, in which case what side panel you chose would be very important. So in that case, you always grab the left side panel with the front and the far right side panel 
with the back. So that's what I'll do here as well, even though in this case they're identical and doesn't matter. But that way you always have it lined up exactly as it would be if you had flipped the box over and we're doing it that way. So I select it, edit and copy. I hop back to my 3D version. I am got this on the side, edit, paste, move tool, bring it to where we want it. Nudge, nudge, 3D perspective tool, grab those corners. All right, now we're good. Okay, so a couple other things you want to do here just to polish this off. One, we want to bring the actual product in place. Right now you can get that image uh, a number of different ways. One, your supplier can send it to you. They can do a straight on photograph on white. If you are doing a product that someone else is already doing, which is what most of us do with Amazon FBA, you can simply grab a nice clean on white version from one of your competitors and bring that in as well. Uh, you can have your logo added to it. Your supplier can do that or you can do it or you can just drop it in as is. So what we want to do is bring it in here. So at the very, very top, it says your product. So we want to make sure that we click on that. We need to now open that product file. So I'm going to go under file and open. It's also one example here. It's just called the grinder. And again, yours might be different if you're doing it for real. So let's bring that in. Click open and it will also show up along the top. All right, so there it is. We are going to use our selection tool and just select the entire thing. Same process as before, edit and copy. We go to our 3D box template. We make sure it's in the right spot. Yes, it is edit and paste. All right, now let's move it. All right, so now we have a bit of an issue because this is way too large. Obviously, we need to scale this thing down, which is what we're going to do. So we actually have a tool that does precisely that. It is known as the scale tool. And you can find that on the left hand side with little uh, rectangle and then an arrow. So I click on that and then simply click on a corner and drag it down. Now, if I just do it freehand, you can see it's changing its perspective and its size and it's, it's not looking very good. However, if I hold down the shift key, it does it exactly in perspective so that no matter how big I make it, my length and my height are all aligned. So let's drop this thing down so that it would look like it would fit inside the box. Grab our move tool over here. Do a little bit large, let's just scale it down a tiny bit more. Just like so, grab our selection tool, and there we have it. I'm just gonna move that over a little bit more here using the move tool. Okay, so now we're basically good. We've got what we want. Uh, there's a few things I wanna do yet. Yeah, one, I wanna crop this, because there's quite a bit of white space, and we wanna maximize the space as much as possible. So again, using my rectangular select tool, I'm just gonna kind of go to the bottom left corner here. If I cut off the shadow a little bit, that doesn't matter too much. Let's slide this over. To be basically just catch it in. One of Amazon's rules is that your product image should use up about 80 to 85% of the image. We wanna make sure that we are in compliance with that. Once that is selected, all I need to do is choose the option to crop it. And I find that in the top menu. So if I go under image, I can choose crop to selection. And there we go, a nice clean image. Now, a couple other things you might want to do. One, you might want to make sure that this is as maximum size. So you might want to scale this thing up a little bit. I like making my images about 3000 pixels um, wide and then let the height sort itself out. This allows people on Amazon to move the mouse over your image and it zooms in, looks super sharp and, and really nice and clear. So that's a great option to do. So let's do that as well. So that is also in the top menu. So it's under the image menu. So there's image and then scale image. So let's choose that. Now, my width is currently 2000 and the height is about 866. So I want to make that about 3000. There's a little tiny piece here. Um, what we want is, is it to look like it's connected. Here it looks like almost like a little mouth um, separated and now it's connected. As long as it's connected, the two will go together. So when I adjust the width, the height will automatically adjust. That's what we want here. So width to 3000. Then if I click in the height box, you'll see that it adjusts automatically. And let's just choose scale.
All right, once it is scaled, let's zoom out on it for a moment and do one final thing. We're going to sharpen this a little bit because we've made it larger. It's lost some of its crispness. So let's make sure that we get it nice and sharp once again as well. So one more option on the top menu. So we're going to go under image and we're going to flatten this down so that we are going to sharpen the entire thing together. So we'll go under image and we will go all the way down to flatten image. That'll take all our individual layers and merge them into one. You want to make that basically your second last step because now we can't edit anything else anymore. And the last thing we need to do is just give it a bit of a sharpening. So this last step we will find under the filters menu. And then I look under enhance and I want unsharp mask. So this one here, click on that. And most of what it will do, it will do on its own without your uh, interference. You can just say, okay, you can, you can adjust it. So there is a standard deviation here. If I pull this over, you'll see what it does to the image. You can sharpen it way too far. So it looks almost like it's a comic book look. We want to bring it down so that the text on the back is still nice and clear and doesn't have that sort of white outline underneath it. Something like that, more or less where we put it initially and click on OK. When that is done, you are finished. It's simply a matter of just saying file and save as, and you can call it whatever you like. You've got your image number one completed. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Please comment, like, subscribe, it helps our channel grow. If you haven't already, visit our website. There's lots of great tools on there to help you grow or give you an edge. My name's Vince and this was Amazon Adventures.